Hello everybody, welcome to Juridia on Air. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to remind all of you guys to please subscribe to our channel so that way next time we go live, you get the notification and make sure you share with everybody. Mm -hmm. Today, we I, ha I have my friend, Luis Barajas. We're here live on Facebook. How are you, Luis? Doing great, <laughs> feeling fabulous. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here again. Oh, thank you for coming back because a lot of people been asking about this insurance and then mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I don't understand that. <laughs> Let me bring you the pro. And you've been doing a good job. Thank you. And like I was telling you, and many people were saying, I like this guy because he knows how to explain mm. teens. Because it's not easy to understand insurance, but also with our culture, sometimes right. we're not used to. Sometimes we're thinking, oh, they're taking advantage of me. Or mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just paying, paying, and right. it's not working for me. Right. So that's why we are going to have you come here more often Thank you. to answer more questions that the audience have. And I want to tell the audience that if you have any comments, you can send me a message direct on Facebook uh, to keep it confidential. And then we, we, we will answer the questions as much as we can. Definitely. Um, and if we don't, then feel, feel free to contact you directly. Yes. And then they can, you know, talk to you more about it, right? But if you want to ask a general question, make sure you put it on your comments. And then we'll, we'll hear live. Uh, tell all your friends about it. Uh, a little bit about you, Luis Barajas. You are the founder. So you're the founder of Protectors Insurance. And you're located here in Omaha, right? Correct, yeah. So we're right off of uh, 24th and Vintage so in the heart of South Omaha. Okay. Uh, we've been there since April 1st of 2022. So we're, our one year anniversary is right around oh, the corner. One year, oh, yeah. okay. Are you gonna have a, a party? Uh, we're planning <laughs> on it, still uh, scheduling that out and getting all the details, but we do plan okay. on having a, a little welcome. Okay. Uh, um, invite some friends, some referral partners. Um, and just come meet our office. Okay, that would be good. So they can come and meet you. Well, if whenever you get that information, let us know, and yeah. then we share with everybody. Perfect. Um, a little bit about yourself. You specialize on businesses and family uh, insurance, right? Correct. And then your first generation Latino, and then son of immigrant and chasing the American dream. So tell us a yeah. little bit about that. <laughs> yeah. So um, as I mentioned, you know, our, our our biggest goal is always providing the education piece to insurance, yes. uh, ensuring your personal assets, your home, your vehicle, as well as your life. You know, we do a lot of home, homeowners, tenants, uh, auto insurance, as well as life insurance, and those. I guess one of the strong foundations for protectors insurance. Uh, we also have the pleasure of working with a lot of contractors. We work with general liability, workers comp, bonds, uh, and getting all that in, in order for them to qualify for larger projects. Oh, which is very um, important, right, to qualify because a lot yeah. of people, they just don't have the opportunity. Right. And it's intimidating. Okay. Well, today I know we're getting a lot of questions about um, the future of the community that we yeah. wanted to talk a little bit about that. Uh, what can you tell us a little bit? You know, um, the future of Omaha, the community and its surroundings, it, it makes me excited. Mm -hmm. um, I think Omaha is in, a, in, a, in, in the right position to really become a stronghold and, and become a major city, I believe, in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's two big indicators showing that right now. The first one, I think it's the most obvious, is uh, home prices. Yes. You know, we've seen that homes have skyrocketed, even with rates being higher, things are still selling quick. Uh, and, you know, I think for the most part, homes have increased in value a good 20% in the last three, four years. Um, I think the, the second biggest indicator, too, is the people. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look around, um, there's so many great, awesome, intelligent professionals in our community. Yes. You know, we have a ton of mortgage officers, bilingual officers that are helping the community grow and, and enhance and, you know, be able to purchase assets. Uh, we have real estate agents. Um, we have other insurance agencies around Omaha as well that are all coming together to putting their grain of salt and just improving the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. And when you have strong leaders like those individuals there in the community, they rise, the community rises. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, right now, just looking around, there's just so many great professionals in our community that are, are making an impact. Um, mm -hmm. They may not notice it um, because it's one by one or transaction per transaction. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the course of time, it's going to be one of the big contributions to the growth uh, of the community and Omaha in general. Mm -hmm. And I think that's 
you know, Omaha, for, I would say, is probably one of the, the, it is the largest city in Omaha, right, in, in Nebraska, right? But I think there's other smaller communities as well that are growing just as quick, maybe at a smaller scale because they're a smaller community, um, but the growth is there. You but know, it's a strong. Strong, strong, strong communities. You know, you head west, you have towns like Columbus, Schuyler, uh, Grand Island, you know, Norfolk, Fremont, uh, as well as West Point. That these are smaller communities, mm -hmm. um, but you're seeing the growth um, both individually in the markets and in business. So, what are you when you talk about real estate? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are even intimidating. Uh, they're just thinking, I'm not even going to look for a house because it's so expensive. Yeah. And then you buy the house because you need to, yeah. you know, and then the insurance part. So how do you how do you help navigate people, not just for residential, but what about the as an investors? Definitely. Mm -hmm. So very different avenues. Coverage are very similar between the two, mm -hmm. but you know, homeowners insurance, it's something that we specialize in. We're always looking to provide the best value to our clients, mm -hmm. help them understand the benefits, the options, but then also how to use it and how it's used at the time of a claim. Mm -hmm. Typically insurance is used at, you know, a, a moment of chaos. Typically there's something that goes wrong, some kind of storm that comes by. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's, you know, out of nowhere, it's unexpected. So being able to have the right knowledge, you know, okay, what's my step one, step two, step three to mitigate this damage to prevent any further damage is important. And I think a lot of times us as agents, we kind of miss giving that information out. Yeah. Um, but definitely homeowner's insurance is important for anybody who's a homeowner, whether you have a mortgage or not. If you mm -hmm. own your home outright, it's still important to protect your biggest asset. On uh, real estate in terms of investing, um, it really depends on what that individual is looking to do. Um, is it a home that's tenant occupied and it's you know in good condition, people are living there on a year to year, year basis? Or is it a property that's vacant that needs renovations? Um, it's distressed and will probably be vacant for the next three or four months while it's being renovated. Those are two different coverages. I would say if it's tenant occupied, you need a rental dwelling policy mm -hmm. with replacement costs so that if anything goes wrong, um, it gets replaced with brand new material, right? The other piece is more of like a builder's risk, homes that are vacant, unoccupied, under renovation. Typically with those, um, the coverage is a little bit different because we're insuring the purchase price of the home, mm -hmm. plus the projected renovations that will take place throughout the next three or four months to give us that final value. Um, so just two different strategies, um, but those are things that we consult with their clients to kind of okay. see what their goal is in the next couple months. Is it a property that's vacant, will need renovations, or is it one that's already tenant occupied um, that's already stabilized? I had a question from one uh, person that was saying that if she buys a house and she wants to put, she wants to rent it out, uh, so she she has to have insurance, obviously, right, mm -hmm. for for that for the tenants, and then do the tenants also have to pay another insurance, or how does yes. it work? Yes, yeah, so as the owner of the property, since the mm -hmm. owner is not occupying the property and it's a rental, mm -hmm. their biggest concern and their only responsibility is the structure of the home. Okay. Making sure that the what home... What does that mean? Structure of important. the home is in terms of, if there's a fire, the mm -hmm. owner of the home is the one that takes a loss for the damages to the home. Okay. Now, on the tenant perspective, the tenant's, respons the tenant's main responsibility is the day-to-day -day actions coming out of that location. Okay. Um, as well as their personal property, of course. Um, I would say for uh, uh, the owner, a rental dwelling would ensure the structure, mm -hmm. but does not ensure the personal property within the building, except for your appliances, furniture that you provide the tenant, which is typically the stove, the refrigerator, a microwave, maybe- The necessities only. Right, the necessities. Now Not the, my coffee espresso right, that I no. pay too much money. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's on the tenant. That's uh, on the tenant. Right, oh, okay, and, okay. and on the tenant, you know, these policies are called renter's insurance policies or tenant mm -hmm. policies, and it provides coverage for the personal property. So the, the espresso, their TV, their electronics, yes. their personal items like clothing. Oh my, you know, designer, uh -huh, finisher. The designer. <laughs> Uh, as well as the responsibility, which is where the renter's policy has this thing called liability insurance built into it. Okay. Because, you know, we know accidents can happen. Um, if the tenant accidentally leaves the stove on and that causes the fire, 
-hmm. you know the owner's not going to be very happy about it right and no to an extent <laughs> the fire department will right nobody will be happy right so the owner's first thing is like okay well does this tenant have renter's insurance so that the renter's insurance can pay out based on its liability um, okay. because the tenant was technically liable for that damage due to the accident of leaving the stove on right if the tenant does not have renter's insurance the owner can potentially go to court to try to resolve the situation and kind of recover some of the funds. Okay. But the policy of the rental should take care of the damages. Okay. But See, I, I just, some, uh, she was telling me that, well, if the, you know, why do I have, as a tenant, why do I have to have insurance mm -hmm. if they have insurance? So right. we're paying to insurance. So that's yeah. the... The, the difference. Yeah, okay. and you know, just to add a little bit to that, one of the other big benefits I would say to renter's insurance is loss of use. Okay. Say in that same situation, the tenant is living in the home, there's a fire and the home is no longer habitable, mm -hmm. it's unsafe to live in, the tenant needs to go elsewhere, right? Either it's gonna take a couple months to fix the home for the tenant to be able to move back, but that means that you have to find a temporary apartment, hotel to live in. Well, renter's insurance has this coverage called loss of use that activates in that specific situation that will pay That's out. That's a very good point because the yeah. other day I had a client that was telling me that was looking for a lawyer mm -hmm. because uh, they're buying a house, okay? But it's not, I think it's like owner to owner or something okay. like that. And so the house caught on fire. Mm. And so now, I mean, I don't know the whole details, but if I'm assuming, um, that let's just say that I buy a house from you, mm -hmm. so it's owner to owner, owner, owner right? Owner. Okay. And then the house goes on fire, okay? And you will, how does it work? Because I, mm -hmm. I can't live in that house because, you know, it's not right. um, in good conditions, mm -hmm. living condition. And I have a family, mm -hmm. so what am I going to do now? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think it really comes down to the legality of how the mm -hmm. contract between the owner-to-owner -owner purchase is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely important to consult uh, a, a good lawyer, lawyer yes. to set up the structure of the contract properly to where, yes, maybe I'm still the owner, but you're paying me monthly to essentially buy the property from me. I'm lending you mm -hmm. money essentially for you to pay me back throughout the years as you rent the property. Um, but in the meantime, in these the meantime, people, it, it, what yeah. are they doing? I know we have to go to a lawyer. Right. And I know they have to review the contract. Mm -hmm. And that's just the legal part. Right. But the reality right now, I have children. Mm -hmm. I have a place to live. I'm going to have to check into a hotel mm -hmm. or get an apartment. Even if uh, yesterday I was trying to get an apartment, mm -hmm. they so you have to get you have to wait at two weeks. Wow, yeah. So if I'm with my family, I'm basically homeless, I'm gonna have to go check into a hotel mm -hmm. room. Who's gonna pay for all those things? That's you'd, the yeah. question. You'd hope that you have the right policy in mm -hmm. place. If, depending on how the contract was written, you could still technically be a tenant in that situation. Mm -hmm. Or if there's financial interest set up in the contract, mm -hmm. which it sounds like that there is, maybe that responsibility of insuring the, the property would fall on the tenant, which is actually the buyer. Um, Let's just say the policy is there. Yeah, the policy is there. How do we use it now? What do so, we need to do? So first thing first, you know, in the event of a fire, you know, there's mm -hmm. definitely law enforcement involved, the fire department's involved. Yes. There's mm -hmm. reports, paperwork so done in the, at that okay. point of time. The claim begins. Once the claim begins, typically within 24 hours, you can kind of start guiding the, the, the tenant to whether they want to live somewhere at a family's front temporarily and they'll receive some kind of compensation. Okay. But a lot of times because of an emergency and how quick it is that you need another home, you have to kind of pay some stuff out of pocket to speed okay. up the process. Insurance will, if the policy is there and the policy is written correctly, they will compensate and reimburse you. But a lot of times because of the emergency and it could have happened at 10 p.m., insurance offices are gonna be closed. They're yes. not gonna resolve the issue and for you. And even if it's open, what are you yeah. gonna do? It, it, you know, it doesn't work that way. You know, you people would think that uh, if you file the claim and the insurance company will resolve the issue for you. Yes. No, in reality, all they do is pay the funds for you to resolve the issue. And at that point, you have to take the leadership role of hiring contractors, maybe finding another place to live, and you will get reimbursed from it, from the so policy. So at least you know, because yes. it's a process, so mm -hmm. save money, people, <laughs> for emergencies. <laughs> yeah, because, save money for emergencies, of course. But be uh, conscious or uh, comfortable that it will get you know, you will get reimbursed for that. Mm -hmm. So for instance, let's just say 
okay, I'm going to take my family. Thank God nobody got hurt, mm -hmm. you know, so we're going to go to check into a hotel. It's going to come out, out of my own pocket. Yes. Um, I wish the hotels will allow, receive, kind of like when you go to the hospital mm -hmm. for an accident. It's like a VIP pass. An invoice, yeah. Yeah, an invoice. We'll invoice you later. <laughs> we'll invoice you later. So I wish they had that with hotels mm -hmm. that you can come and say, okay, we get it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you, we know it's tough. But reality, go, go to a hotel, to a family, right? Mm -hmm. And then even if you go to the family, can you charge for that? You can. You can charge mm -hmm. a reasonable rate. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going to go in there and they're going to charge you 2000 for a it's room. It's not for right? season. but Yeah, it's not know. for season, right? So you can expect <laughs> but those prices. But something similar, yeah. like if I were to go to a hotel, mm -hmm. I'll probably pay, I don't know, whatever, reasonable, yeah, right? Yeah, reasonable pricing, reasonable you know? Reasonable price, because we have something, maybe like print out how mm -hmm. much it costs, and then... Uh, build it so we can i can give it to my sister or something yes. right yes and then you know under these insurance policies the mm -hmm. insurance policies do allow you to take action at the time of a claim without getting the consent of the insurance company to prevent and mitigate further damage so if you need to make temporary repairs in order to prevent more damage you have the right to do that and technically you're supposed to take that leadership role of hey how can we patch this up now mm -hmm. so that we can prevent more damage and then also leaving in a, in a state where the insurance company can come and investigate the situation and write out their own estimates. This sounds like a lot of work. Is this something <laughs> that I will have to do individually or can I just hire a lawyer to do this for me? Or what do normally yeah. people do in this situation? You know, normal that, people... With successful mm -hmm. you know, results. Yeah, you know, normal people take it on on their own. I would mm -hmm. say the biggest thing is always keep good track record of everything. Okay. Receipts contracts with contractors and make sure you're working with reputable businesses as well yes. if you call you know roofing companies and i know a few out there mm -hmm. that are great companies that will come out and, and know the process of insurance so they don't just come do things uh not knowing what they're doing i think right? it's important to have experience mm -hmm. and you have contact like in case i yeah. need roofers or you know construction contractors mm -hmm. you have people that you have worked in the past with them, Yes, you know, yeah. we do um, have the pleasure of, of working with a lot of businesses here in the area mm -hmm. that specialize in different aspects of construction. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all companies that are licensed. A lot of them are bonded with the city if they're if they're required to. Okay. Um, and a lot of these companies are also bilingual as well, which oh, can help out the Latino community. Because um, let me see if they have any, any uh, comments live. You know, I think that's mm -hmm. one of the step number ones is working with the right people that okay. know the process, know how to properly write up estimates and paperwork so that they can show this paperwork to the insurance company, making the process just smoother and easier. Um, you know, you yourself, you won't be cleaning the basement, won't clean the, up the fire. You know, there's professionals yeah. out there, there's restoration companies out there that will handle that. And for the most part, they know what it means to act as behalf of the client during a claim. Okay. Um, so... Well, and I don't know if you want to add anything else. I don't see any questions so far. Yeah, um, I would say on the real estate side, mm -hmm. um, you know, we do work with a lot of investors. We are very familiar with the market, kind of the process of renovating a home, um, not hands on, but just from an outside perspective on the insurance side, at least. Yes. Um, and we've had the pleasure of actually uh, filming a couple videos as well with some of our investor friends here in Omaha okay. talking about the start to finish process of insuring a home that's under renovation that's vacant. We did one in English and Spanish. So if you're okay. looking to maybe get some insight and looking to prepare for your next project, say you're a first time investor, insurance is your best friend to protect that mm -hmm. um, investment. And then to have that peace of mind that you can focus on what's important and know that if something goes wrong, there's coverage there in place. Um, another good thing I would add with real estate as well, especially with properties under renovation, is working with qualified contractors uh, because these insurance policies will not cover uh, mistakes or quality issues of the contractor. Um, mm -hmm. So if the contractor is not qualified, they don't do a good job, that's going to fall on you for contracting them to begin with. Oh, right? really? It will be <laughs> and, Yeah, insurance won't pay for defects due to your contractor. They didn't install things correctly. So you have to work with companies that know what they're doing, that they're insured. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way, you can transfer some of the risk of the project to the contractor in the form of a contract. 
you know. That is um, so qualified so contractors. Qualified contractors. And, and we also have a few on our list okay. that specialize. I would say drywall, flooring, carpentry. We have some roofers as you well. You have everything, Luis. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's important. You want people to be successful. Yeah, 100%. Okay. We mm -hmm. want the claim process to be easy. We mm -hmm. want our clients to work with other great companies that we know will provide excellent service that will help the client be successful in that claim. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we don't, we're not just an insurance agency. You know, we try to connect our, our clients with professionals in their community that will lead them to their end goal. Okay. Um, so, um, so if you not only like if you have a business, you want insurance or you were involved, if your client, you will refer them to qualified uh, contractors and correct. navigate them. You're just going to say, oh, yeah, figure it out. Yeah, no. I already sold you the insurance, so now <laughs> you got to call this customer right. service number. Right. And we will always give out options so that mm -hmm. our client can reach out and talk to each individual uh, personally to kind of get a feeling, you know, is this person somebody I can trust? And you can tell a lot by the way that somebody picks mm -hmm. up their phone, right? Uh, are, are they picking up the phone? Um, right. Oh so giving God. out options yeah. is important for us um, because we want the client to be taken care of correctly, but we want the client to also pick the person that they feel more comfortable with. It's important. Okay. We're going to put your information over here on the comments and then also send us the videos. Yeah. So that way people can, you know, get educated and we Perfect. learn something. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being here. Uh, we'll, we're gonna see you. We're gonna see more of you, Luis. <laughs> thank you. I, I'm excited. Looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. See you next time. Bye.